Happy Halloween everybody! I wanted to insert some holiday cheer into the videos I made this month, and for this video I wanted to scare myself a little bit. I wanted to get my hands dirty. I wanted to cover what scares me the most, and you know what that is? Probably fear of disappointing my family and friends as I slowly devolve into a cave-dwelling, unmedicated, brain-rot maxing burnout. However, there aren't a ton of horror movies that cover specifically that, and I don't feel ready enough for Charlie Kaufman yet, but for an easier first date answer of what scares scares me the most in movies? That's easy, spiders. I am so scared of like scary spiders. Note the qualifier there. I'm not like super scared of them all the time. I'm scared of what they could be, you know? I don't live in Australia, so I don't find myself running into the ones that catch birds and snakes. And if I did, I'd be way more scared of them. As it stands now though, if it stands on eight legs, it does creep me out. Bugs in general are one of so few things in the real living world that are gross and scary to look at. Some people find snakes scary, but unless it's venomous, I really am not scared of them. I had a few growing up actually. I like snakes, shout out Anaconda's Curse of the Blood Orchid. I don't know why, but I think it's a fun movie. But back to spiders. Scary spiders can stay the hell out of my home, but I love seeing them on the screen. Before the last couple years, spider movies were in a tough spot, similar to shark movies. Jaws is the only shark movie you'd ever need, and Arachnophobia dropped in 1990 and kind of cemented itself as the one and only scary spider movie you'll ever need. Jeff Daniels being really good at acting paralyzed by fear and a bunch of realistically sized but still scary spiders, the movie is kind of incredible. It scared me ever since I was a kid. Then, in 2002, we get another banger spider movie with Eight-Legged Freaks. This is more like a B-movie, silly spider movie, but done on a pretty big budget. It was the deep blue sea to Arachnophobia's jaws, if that makes sense. But what else? There had to have been other spider movies, right? And yes, absolutely, there were tons, but most of them relegated to sci-fi channel movies and things like that, though I do want to quickly shout out the 2003 film Arachnia, because it uses that old school giant creature movie technique of stop motion and forced perspective and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. For some reason, spider movies are absolutely eating lately. I want to talk to you about two of them today. One is pretty good, so I want to still talk about it a little, and one is for real the best spider movie since Arachnophobia. Sting came out early this year and was directed by Kaya Roche Turner and is about a young girl who finds a spider and soon realizes that the thing is incredibly intelligent and starts to grow at a rapid pace, endangering the lives of her complicated family and anyone else living within the walls of their apartment complex. The spider in this is way less creepy than the ones in the next movie, and overall I'd say Sting does have a lighter touch to it. From premise to presentation, this movie somewhat follows a predictable but tried and true path of, I'm making this phrase up kind of on the spot escalating ignorance, meaning when the way the tension in a movie builds is through a diverse group of characters each interacting with the same thing as it gets worse and worse and how they will or won't notice the growing problem. This is also something Infested does, perhaps to way greater effect, but more on that in a minute. I like this movie and I will defend Sting when I see its detractors because there are some things I did find compelling. The dynamic between the main character Charlotte, get it, and her mom and stepdad, again while cliche, is pulled off pretty smooth here, and I believed the tension between all three of them. As the story plays out, the bigger this spider is getting and the more havoc it begins to wreak in the air vents and walls, so too does the stability of this family. It's got big, Amblin PG-13 energy, but honestly, I think it's still effective for some of the scares, especially if you are scared of spiders the way that I am. But also, the main flaw I had with Sting was when watching as a scary spider fiend, because this movie commits a pretty big sin when it comes to this entirely made up in my own head rubric for what works or doesn't work in a scary spider movie. The spider's an alien. It's not even a spider. I mean, blood, are you even trying to scare me? Scary spider movies are only scary if they are spiders through and through, dude. I don't care if they're genetically engineered or unrealistically big. They gotta be at least in the canon IRL spiders. So the suspension of disbelief takes a little bit of a beating during this movie. Just go into it knowing it's going to be a little bit lighter on terror, but it is pretty scary. While Sting is a movie about one spider that starts small and gets super big, Infested makes the exponentially scarier choice to be about, like, so many spiders. You guys, Infested rips. Infested is the debut feature of French writer-director Sebastian Vanacek and tells the story of Caleb, a young man who lives with his sister in a rundown apartment building after the death of their mother. 
Caleb likes spiders a lot, and all sorts of other insects too, but he's very passionate about them, and he genuinely cares for them. He buys a spider off the black market to add to his collection. At first, it's imprisoned in a shoebox until Caleb can get its new home set up. And, of fucking course, the spider makes a hole in the box and gets out. And while still a little hazy on the details, it's safe to assume this spider was pregnant or can immaculately conceive or something, because this spider gets out and multiplies in the dark, wet corner of the base. See, the spiders look a lot like huntsman spiders, ugly and somehow skinny and thick at the same time, and they're super fast and exactly just big enough to be scary. And for a lot of scenes, they are real huntsman spiders. In a ton of shots, the spiders multiply like crazy, and soon the whole building is an absolute nightmare scenario hellscape, with fewer and fewer safe places to hide, especially once the characters are trapped inside the building due to a forced quarantine from outside. Both Sting and Infested both find a similar way for the same storytelling device to keep everybody isolated. In Sting, it's a massive snowstorm trapping everybody, and Infested, it's the cops. See, Infested is about something more than just spiders. Infested is a pretty sneaky class commentary, too. It's never too on the nose, and in fact, we don't even know what's going on outside the building until very late in the movie. This claustrophobic setting due to the spiders only grows worse once we realize that humans are on the other side of that locked exit, keeping them inside. The building is clearly old and low income, and most of our characters are lower class and people of color. It wouldn't be a French horror movie without some deeper meaning in injected into its horror. It's not too heavy-handed and could be seen as unnecessary, but I'm glad the commentary is there. It fits in very nicely with the overall story and it elevates the scary spider movie in a way not many scary spider movies would ever think or even get to do. For that reason, it feels inspired. The filmmaking on display in Infested, specifically the handling of several set pieces, is truly impeccable. The tension ratchets up from the second we see the hole in that damn shoebox and Vanacek's steady hand behind the camera leads us right into his trap. The cinematography is gray and blue and oppressive and grimy, and just like a spider stalking its prey, the camera movements are smooth and still when building all this tension, creeping closer and closer until that tension finally snaps. Then the camera is free to swing wildly around and bound down hallways following our characters as they run for their lives. Vanacek feels very immersed in the story he's telling on every technical level, and I love when you can just tell that a filmmaker knows exactly what they're doing. And Sam Raimi could see that too, because he just locked down Vanacek to make the next Evil Dead movie. And if you've seen Infested, that makes perfect, perfect sense. And I can say I am so, so excited to see what he does with that franchise. Infested checks nearly every box in my imaginary rubric for scary spider movies. First, what size are we talking? For the scariest parts of the movie, they are just spider-sized, often real, practical spiders. Shout out the spider wrangler on set that appeared in the credits. You, sir, are a king and a madman. Then, then we learn that when under environmental pressure, like they're stuck in this building, they can reproduce quickly and grow to be 10 times their size. So throughout the movie, they get increasingly bigger, and I think mileage will vary for how frightening the spiders are at their biggest, since of course there is much heavier use of CGI to create these disgusting things. Caleb, our lead here, is also a really interesting character. He's the hero of the story, but we also know him to be sort of a ne'er-do-well, and he's kind of a hustler, possibly has dealt drugs in his past and has a penchant for buying unknown breeds of black market spiders. He also puts his entire life and everybody he cares about in lethal, real danger, which he feels the repercussions of throughout the movie. And by the end, I personally did feel like he had a really well done, fleshed out arc. There's also just great chemistry between the whole cast, him and his sister and his friends, and they all give convincing performances. Shout out to that bathroom scene. I have chills down my arms just thinking about it. I don't want to spoil everything or run through the plot beat by beat, so I'll leave it there. I was really into this soundtrack as well. There's not a ton of original score, but the use of French drill music was great, and some of these songs are kind of bangers. It makes sense in the context of the world we inhabit with these characters. Love the shot of the old man sitting in his apartment with spiders trapped under all these glasses. Like, a lot of this imagery in, in the movie is, is really intense and effective. If you couldn't tell, I like Infested a lot more than Sting, but I don't think Sting is bad, but Infested is what we watch these movies for, at least I do. Expertly handled scary spider movie in my opinion, but obviously it's not perfect, but I'll be honest, for the life of me, I don't have any major criticisms of it. Everything it sets out to accomplish is accomplished by the end. People will have their problems with it, and I respect that, 
But when it comes to the criteria of scary spider movies, regardless of some flaws, this is the best of the best. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this this video is kind of scatterbrained all over the place. Let me know if you've seen either of these and talk to me about them down in the comments. Spider movies are an acquired taste and I don't have a lot of people to talk about this horrific French spider movie with. That's why I love making these videos. Shout out to like 800 subscribers I'm at right now. Super cool. Um, like and sub if you want and happy Halloween.